Views and opinions expressed within the following program are solely those of the individual. These views and opinions do not necessarily represent those of Shaw TV. Hey Calgary, I'm Kevin Jorney. Today's May 23rd and this is Calgary Now. You can call it a sport, an art form, or just a way to get around. Whatever name you give it, skateboarding hasn't and isn't declining in popularity. From its humble beginnings in the 70s to its professional sports status of today, youth all over the world continue to pick up a board and earn their scrapes and bruises learning tricks. For those who love it, one of the challenges is finding places to skate. But for many residents and business owners in cities, much has been done to limit property and public spaces from the damage skateboarding can inflict. Calgary has two permanent concrete skate parks and a number of temporary ones that are set up throughout the warmer months. Yet, with a growing number of youth getting involved, the accessibility to the permanent parks and the temporary ones are still an issue. The City of Calgary released a skateboarding amenities strategy in 2011, but the work is far from over. Skateboarding has evolved from a handful of creative and driven kids in Southern California to a legitimate global phenomenon. Throughout the years, skateboarding has showcased itself as intense athleticism, a sound means of transportation, a culture, and to some, a lifestyle. From its onset, however, society had labeled skateboarding as somewhat of a counterculture and branded skaters with an unfavorable stigma. But times, they are a-changing. Many skateboarders are now eligible voters, taxpayers, and parents themselves. Our city is chock full of skaters, and it's clear the need exists to provide these Calgarians with the means to enjoy their craft. Plans are in the works and excitement is beginning to build amongst thousands of Calgary skaters as well as the city. Tonight, my guests and I are talking skateboarding in Calgary. Want to join us? We're taking your calls at 403-539-6710 or you can shoot us a tweet at Calgary Now Show. Stay with us. The skateboarding topic is an interesting one because I've never been obviously an avid skateboarder. Played, played around with it a little bit as a kid, but for the most part I do hear that there's kind of this growing demand and this need for more skate parks, um, for more places where people who do skateboard recreationally can kind of go and enjoy themselves. Um, and actually, I looked into it a little bit and I don't know if many people know this, but there's a 10 year plan, I guess, in place right now as of April um, to bring about 50 new skate parks to Calgary. So. Um, good in that obviously the demand for it's kind of being heard and recognized by the city so I'm interested to see how this plays out in terms of some of our city's other 10-year plans or five-year plans or plans in general if this is something that's actually going to be a tangible you know end date kind of thing but we'll see so yeah all in all I think that there appears to have been a demand for it but from what I can see it's actually kind of there's a step to making um, making that better Welcome back. Tonight we're happy to have a representative from CASE, Calgary's Association of Skateboarding Enthusiasts, Josh Etherington, Brian Henrik from Skateboarding, uh, pardon me, a skateboarding specialist with Source, and Stephanie Wan, a business planner with the City of Calgary. Guys, thanks a lot for being here. I'll get you to quickly uh, tell me a bit about yourself and your organization. We'll start with you, Josh. Okay, I'm with CASE. Uh, CASE has been around for quite a while now. We have a non-profit association just to further uh, the benefits of skateboarding in Calgary, uh, be it uh, getting more skateboard parks, uh, fighting anti-skateboard law bylaws and just kind of being a common voice for all skateboarders. So, uh, there, you know, there's soccer associations out there and whatnot, but there's never really been an association for skateboarders. So, yeah. if one skateboarder thinks this on one side of town and one thinks this on this side of town, that voice doesn't get heard by the city. So, we joined together uh, probably informally about 10 years ago, but became a non-profit society about five years ago. And since then, I've been working pretty hard to just get more things like skateboard parks and get it to be legalized yeah. to have skateboard ramps in your yards and stuff, which there was awesome. a bylaw against. Awesome. Perfect. Thanks for being here. Tell me a bit about yourself then. Uh, well, I've been skating for about 14 years since I was in grade 7, and without that I don't know where I'd be right now, realistically. like Skateboarding for a young person can be a really good outlet, uh, creatively, emotionally, whatever. It can just mm -hmm. be a hobby, but it's gotten me to where I am today. I'm a hard goods buyer for the Source Skateboards, a local company. Uh, we've been around since very 1992. Very popular. That's right. Very yes. popular company. Um, so we've been around since 1992. We're a lot smaller than I think a lot of people think we are, but uh, we try and do our best to make sure everybody's welcomed and appeal to everybody. Rock and roll. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Appreciate it, Brian. Now, Stephanie, I'm sure you do a lot with the city. I do a lot, I'm but sure my biggest project and most exciting project is um, implementing the skateboard amenity strategy that uh, Justine was talking about. Yeah. So it's really exciting and we're just moving into um, 
hiring a consultant firm to help us with implementing the program. So we'll be looking in the next coming months to get the community and our partners case um, involved in talking to the community and defining where we want to put the sites. Of course we can't build all 50 right now, yeah, yeah. Um, but we're looking at trying to get the first two years of the plan. In you got to start somewhere, right? We do, and it's really exciting. So guys, skateboarding in general, I mean, I think there's a few misconceptions uh, about the craft, the activity uh, of skateboarding. Is it an art? Is it a means of transportation, a culture, a lifestyle? I mean, what exactly encompasses skateboarding? I guess the answer to that would be like D, all the above. You yeah. know, yeah. it could be whatever you want it to be. I mean, some people it could be a transportation for. Yeah. Some people it's an art. Some, part, some people it's a lifestyle and a life ambition. I mean, I've been doing it a long time too, since probably the late 80s, right? So I mean, that's going on sure. 25 years. And I don't really plan on stopping. And there's other people that I know that are in their 50s that still skateboard. So. It could be a lifetime ambition, and, you know, it could be your art, it could be your sport, it can be your uh, physical outlet. I think it could be all of the above. Yeah. It's, you, it's whatever you make of it, because there's, there's no rules. It's freedom. Is that what the allure was for you, you think, early on? It was whatever the cool kids were doing uh, yeah. in grade seven, so that's what I wanted to do, and just kind of takes you. You can, you can do so much with it. You can just do it part-time, you can do it whatever. Usually you can get competitive. Totally. I mean, there's a lot of money to be made skateboarding nowadays, it seems. It seems like it's one of those activities that maybe kids that weren't so inclined to pick up a football or a hockey stick had that outlet to maybe even not only enjoy the craft alone, but kind of team up together and, totally. and, and share ideas and that social, I guess, skate language. I think there's a lot less barriers for people to join skateboarding. Like financially, it doesn't cost yeah. hardly anything. I mean, to be a hockey player, your parents, one, have to be around to drive you yeah. oh, to yeah, and from bucks. hockey, so they have to have that free time. If you have two parents at work, that might not be a possibility. Yeah. Then they have to have the, be able to afford the equipment and the registration. Skateboarding, I mean, you can go buy your kid a skateboard, he can go up in front of his house and do it all he wants every day, right? And so he also welcomes people that maybe aren't conformists. Like, no one wants your coach telling you what to do all day, so some kids kind of gravitate to yeah. having their own kind of freedom, like you said, and going your own direction. And just hanging out with your friends, right? So, and from the city's point of view, we see that this is a really healthy recreational activity Absolutely. that will encourage um, people of all ages, because it's not just for children. Um, all ages of people are participating in skateboarding, and it's a great opportunity for them to come together um, and to have fun together and to learn and uh, know how to socialize and and a skill. Yeah. And yeah. most of all, it's fun. It's fun. That's the main thing, right? Now you mentioned you've got, you, you noticed a few people. Well, you know, in the 50s, obviously, youth involved. Just how popular is skateboarding in Calgary, and what age gamut are we really talking about here? It varies. Uh, for me, working retail, I see kids who are as young as four or five trying to get into it with wow. their parents, and we have some dads who are getting their kids into it because they either still skate or they used to. Mm. And so mm -hmm. it can be, yeah, like age four to 50, like Josh was saying. I'd say like the first wave of skateboarding came in in like the mid 50s, right? 60s, 70s, right? So. Since then, you're not gonna, you know, in the 80s, there wasn't gonna be that many older skateboarders because it hasn't been around so long. Right. But now that it's been around, it's become generational. Like, I actually have uh, twins that are uh, 14 months old, and I'm gonna go buy a skateboard probably the next week or two for them, right? Cool, to get them right? rolling around on it. So. And you're not alone, I don't think, either. Yeah. I mean, uh, is that kind of why the city's paying a bit more attention nowadays, do we think, to, uh, to the needs of skateboarders? I mean, these are people that have grown skateboarding, but not only that, I mean, they're homeowners, they're paying property taxes, uh, they're voting. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Um, we listened to Calgarians, so we had, we've done a few different studies to find out about what the recreation needs of citizens of Calgary are. Um, one is called the Recreation Amenity Gap Analysis, and it came out skateboarding was a very um, important activity for people to do. And we also recognized that there was a gap mm -hmm. in the facilities that we have. And so wanting to meet the needs of our community was the reason why we developed the skateboard amenity strategy. And so it's based on some um, factual um, research that we've done with Within the citizen, with the citizens of Calgary, yeah. and it showed about 35,000 people to, are, are skateboarding in Calgary right now, which is great Huge. because we only have three permanent sites right now. Though in the in the summertime, we do have the mobile skate parks. Yeah, which I want to touch on a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. So just so we're clear now, there's the Mackenzie Area Skate Park. Yeah, and, and Mackenzie, then there's the Shaw oh. Millennium Skate Park. Correct. These are permanent fixtures. Yes. And they are open all year or just throughout the warmer months. Well, th um, Shaw is open all year because there's no fences, so it's, it's totally accessible. It's a good game. Yeah, exactly. it's yeah. great. Nighttime, too. Um, yep. And uh, 
the one at Mackenzie Lake, or sorry, Mackenzie Town, yep. is open as well, um, weather permitting. In the winter time, they I understand they do they take it down. I don't really. So. I believe they do take it down. It's on a kind of a rain area, right? Yeah. So. Well, is anyone skating in the winter? Is that a silly question? Yes, definitely. People are skating. Oh yeah. Um, what I see in the winter time, uh, kids are shoveling Millennium. They're shoveling anything they're shoveling they can. The they will go. They will That's clear great. it up. And uh, every snowfall, there's kids out there with shovels. Yeah. If you go on YouTube, I've definitely you can see people doing that in the middle of the winter, shoveling yeah. out on a Schnook day, just to ride the bowl or something down in Millennium. So it's crazy. But well, generally, we get about six months season where it's fair weather before you have to start going to extreme measures. So is that why we see? I mean, because I think, I guess, as an outsider's perspective, you know, you're looking at it, you see. It's warmer months, man. Like, these people want to get on the boards. They want to go enjoy. You know, these parks are getting packed. Arguably, there's not enough space at these parks. But then you got to think about it. I mean, is that only during the warmer months? Is there really a need throughout the year? It sounds like you know there probably is. I would say definitely. It's not a part-time activity. I mean, a lot of people that do skateboard probably or likely do snowboard as well. But I know, given the choice, a lot of them would just skateboard through the whole year. Yeah. Uh, there was an indoor park in Calgary not too long ago. Actually, it was the Source Indoor Park. Mm -hmm. And I think when that opened up, my snowboarding went to like almost none because I would rather go skateboarding than go skate. snowboarding. So. It's non-existent. Uh, no, we, it was uh, quite a costly endeavor, just yeah. the insurance alone. Um, oh, of course, of course. It was located in the Curry Barracks, and it was, it was a good location. It was really big. Uh, probably didn't need it to be as large, but it was a huge skate park, and it was great. It was always full. Is there anything like that on the city's plate moving forward? The Indoor skate, skate park? This um, is a, the skateboard amenity strategy mm -hmm. is only talking about 50 outdoor. Just the outdoor. Mm -hmm. Now, as a couple of skaters, uh, I mean, I'm sure you're happy regardless of what's coming. Uh, a new park's a new park. Mm -hmm. uh, would you like to see more city funds allocated to an indoor park? It'd be nice. Uh, uh, definitely, I know Case has always talked about trying to get indoor space and trying to work with uh, uh, different kind of retailers or businesses that have closed a building and trying to look for yeah. some of that co-op space that we can get in before they tear it down. Nothing's actually happened. We know we've gotten pretty far along with it, mm. and just for whatever red tape, it just hasn't happened. But it's definitely something that Case and I think almost every skateboarder in town would welcome. Mm. There is a couple indoor spots uh, that do open up from time to time. I think skate there's church. a place called Skate Church that's just a church that lets people skate. Indoor um, school. Yeah. I don't think it's an affiliation or anything. It's just yeah. you don't have to be religious. You can just go there and skateboard, and they right. let people yeah, do sure, it. Sure. Um, I think that's the only official one yes. that would be for public, right? Yeah. A few people have ramps in their garages and that type of thing, right? Or maybe you have a warehouse job, right? And your boss lets you skate there on the weekend and stuff. But people get it done during the week for sure. Yeah, it sounds like one way People another. drive up to... Uh, Incline and Sylvan Lake. Sylvan Lake to go skateboarding as well. And That's the closest what's, indoor. So what's in Sylvan Lake? Uh, it's a skate park called Incline. It's through Anchor uh, Skate Shop, I believe, up there. And it is the only indoor skate park south of Edmonton. So it must see a huge influx of skaters. I mean, I know there's a whole lot of people in Edmonton that are in the same boat as Calgary. Mm -hmm. A lot of skaters. Yeah, they actually have quite a few outdoor parks in the last probably 10 years. They uh, got kind of got on it and built quite a few parks up there. They don't have any indoor parks currently that I know of. I could be wrong. The West 49 Indoor Skate Park, which is in the West Ed store. Okay, so I guess they do have a, a small one there. Right? Yeah. So there's options throughout the province. Just it not Sounds like we're coming to Calgary pretty quick as well. The Crow's Nest Pass actually has an indoor park as well. So that'd be that one too. We're going to take a quick break, folks. It's time to hear from our resident Rant Pack. We'll be back right after this. I think skateboarding in Calgary has always been a, a kind of an issue. The skateboarders like to consider themselves sometimes on the outskirts of the law and skirting the law and stuff like that. Uh, the damage done by skateboarders can be somewhat significant by the fact that they put the wax on the side of the concrete barriers in order to slide down them more easily and stuff like that, which as a property owner I would be frustrated and mad at as well. The building of Shaw Millennium Skate Park, I think, managed to centralize a lot of those people in one place and I, over the past 20 years, have seen the damage gone down in downtown and you don't see security officers and police chasing skateboarders away very much anymore. Um, the prevalence of longboarding in Calgary has increased, which doesn't cause any damage as far as I can see. Um, there still is a whole myth about skateboarding is not a crime, is skateboarding a crime, etc, etc. I think that um, it's a very NIMBY situation, the whole not in my backyard. Everybody wants places for their kids to go and, and have fun, but nobody wants it in their backyard because of the kids and the noise and all the stuff that entails and comes with it. Hey, hey Calgary, welcome back. Tonight we're talking about skateboarding. Don't forget, you can tweet us or shoot us a comment on Facebook if you like. 
So we had a caller. The caller called in and chose not to leave a name, which is fair. And didn't want to talk on air. Again, I can understand. I appreciate that. Now, the caller's question was, should skateboarders be required to wear protective gear, knee pads, elbow pads, and helmets? Should it be required? Should it be a law? I, I don't think so. I think it's up to your discretion. Uh, once you're over 18, you don't have to wear a helmet when you're cycling. So it should point. be... I think it should be fair game kind of thing. What do you, what, oh, oh he's okay. thinking about it. I, got, I have to give the city perspective. <laughs> so again, it's around managing risk, and then any activity has risk to it. So mm -hmm. in my opinion, this is just my opinion, yeah. and the city's opinion is that we <laughs> hope to help people manage risks on our facilities that we build. So that would mean wearing helmets and the pads. Yeah. Um, and so so you, yeah. you hope people are going to utilize the equipment that's available to protect them, but mm -hmm. it's not necessarily mandated. No, I and don't. Nor think is there any plans to mandate it. No, not for the the um, programs that okay. we're going to build, the those skate parks that we're going to build. But we're going to encourage, and it's yeah. about if there is a way to. To me, it's important to if you're skateboarding when you're five years old to be skateboarding when you're 50 if you love it. So let's figure out how you can do that, and it is by using those protective gears. Clearly, you're going to be putting pads equipment on your, you know, your kids, right? Ah, uh, I guess oh. I'm not going to say I'm anti-pads at all, but I mean, I, I've never worn pads. I guess I grew up probably in a little bit different generation, and I didn't have to wear a helmet riding a bicycle or anything. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of had to do think about that. What am I do with my kids? I mean, they're 14 months old, so probably for you know the next little bit when I have them rolling around because they can barely walk, that I'll probably do I some kind of pads. I think Momsy's going to have a few words. <laughs> but I, you know, I think once they're old enough to kind of make their own decisions, then you know, then I'm going to. Well, we'll have to see. Um, yeah. but okay, okay. I don't That's know. Fair. I'm, That's I'm, fair not gonna, I'm not going to say I don't think. Oh, I'd like them to make their own decision and feel free. Is our city helping or maybe hindering skateboard culture? How is our city receiving skateboarding in general? Define city. Like, do you mean. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, Calgary. I mean, Calgary. Yeah. I mean, Calgary. Calgary. I mean, I'm not talking. I'm not talking uh, bylaws. I mean, so there just is the some city as a whole. Topic of contention, but I'm talking yeah, citizens on the street. I think that's tough. It's. I think with community events, that you see a lot more demand for skateboarding now. It's it's such a popular thing. Yeah. Uh, it does surge up and down in popularity, but it's usually on the forefront of what kids are doing, and it's a good way to attract. Uh, attention. So mm -hmm. I think it's a good thing and it's more helping lately. There's a lot more starting up that uh, is going to encourage kids to get involved Be with Because it. I got to say, as an outside perspective, you know, I live in a condominium complex yeah. and I remember pulling in there the first day when I was, you know, looking to buy the place and it's the, the no skateboarding and no bicycling. It's the no fun zone. You know, you can essentially allow to waddle around and everyone's safe and have fun, I guess. I don't get it, but there's that obvious no, you know yeah. where it's uh, it's frowned upon, and, and I, I guess it's it's refreshing to hear that maybe that's not completely the case from your perspective, Josh. I think, what about think when you see signs such as that, I think that's property owners. You know, maybe going a little overboard, worrying about liabilities and whatnot. But mm, I, I think, think that's a part of it the general public, I think, is a lot more accepting of it. I mean, it's on TV a lot more with you know X Games and whatnot, and Tony Hawk and everything being kind of yeah. popular. So people get more acclimatized to skateboarding. But I also think when we go to meet with communities and stuff, I'm amazed at how many people from older generations and stuff are actually welcoming the information about skate parks in their neighborhood. Uh, we're not having pushback as much as we thought. We're having people go, that'd be a great idea. I want to get these kids something to do. That's awesome. Something constructive, something yeah, that's healthy. That's so yeah. I'd say it's a lot more welcoming. And definitely from the city government side, it's, they've been working with us mm -hmm. the last little bit. So that's great. Yeah, strides are definitely being made, it sounds like. Uh, the pathways, though, this is, this is something that I'm still scratching my head about. I mean, uh, rollerbladers are, are welcome on pathways. We've got 700 kilometers of pathways mm -hmm. in Calgary. I mean, the largest in, I think, North America, actually. You can rollerblade there. Like I say, you can ride your bike. You're on wheels. You can't skateboard. You cannot skateboard. What level of frustration, if any, exists amongst the skateboarding community in Calgary to the fact that, you know, we can't utilize those pathways? I guess I didn't even know you couldn't do it. So. You just, do, <laughs> do you do it? I've, heard, I've used the pathways. Yeah, yeah. Without, without an incident. Yeah. yeah. I've heard off and on that it's been illegal to go on the pathways, but it, there's so many longboarders, skateboarders in the summer now, it's, it'd be hard to ticket everybody. It would definitely seem heavy-handed one direction if they were letting people on rollerblades and bicycles yeah. go and skateboard to not going. It would really seem like you're singling out one group for definitely. no mm -hmm. apparent reason. So mm -hmm. if that is a bylaw, which I guess probably your research shows that it is, then I would think it's probably antiquated and probably should be updated. Seems fair. And that's one thing that we want to do with our skate parks um, because we 
you asked the question about do you think Calgary is hindering it? I think a lot of people think of Shaw Millennium Park. We don't want that in our backyard. But the skateboard strategy talks about these small um, skate spots. So they're mm -hmm. about the size of a basketball um, court. court yeah. And so a half basketball court, I mean. And so that's pretty reasonable there. And so what we want to do is try to connect those smaller sites um, along the pathway. So we'll be looking into the the bylaw issue as well. Oh really? So it actually may be reviewed in the future it sounds like. Uh, yeah, so so that's what we're hoping Smart to play, do. I think. That's what it is should, because yeah. we want the idea is we want the, the people to have a variety of different terrains so we're not mm -hmm. going to do cookie cutters we're going to have some really exciting um, interesting terrains and we're going to be working with these folks mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. sure that that happens and we want to be able to have the people be, be able to get to them so because again, it's around being sustainable yeah. and get rid of the car if we can do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Calgary has traffic issues enough as it is. I think. That's right. So, how would those those uh, the mobile parks work? Then they would stick around for what duration during the summer? Would they rotate or? Okay, so the mobile parks yeah. are a different thing than our strategy. So those those small skate spots are going yeah. to be permanent spots. Okay. And okay. so so they'll be there in your community and they'll be used primarily yeah. for skateboards. But we also have other wheeled sports we're going to be looking at too. So they're going to be different. Each site is going to be different depending on their community mm -hmm. and what's in their site yeah. and the people that are living there. But there is the mobile sites that will be rolling out this correct. summer, correct? Yeah. yeah. They're currently out there right now. I actually just drove by one. It's in uh, Kelvin Grove, so yeah. off Elbow oh, cool. in Glenmore. I think it's set till June third or something. Yeah, they It'd be it. close today with the rain. So it's it. there till June third. I might be slightly off on that. And then I wonder, will it, will it rotate though? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. that's how it'll work. So what's the duration? So, so kids know it sounds like maybe about a month. I there. think there are certain areas that will see uh, a month long duration and then a couple smaller communities that will see it just for two weeks and then it'll switch. Okay. The communities have to put a request in with the city that they want it and then they work with the city. So depending on the availability, I think it goes from being two weeks to a month mm -hmm. or whatnot, right? And so if people are interested in finding out the locations, they can, uh, if they go on the website, if they just Google um, Mobile Skate Parks Calgary, it'll come okay. up for them. Or, of course, they can phone 311. Right. Um, no, it's phone 311. Yeah, 311 is great. So are skaters excited about this? Skateboarding community pretty excited about I these mobile parks? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the mobile parks, yes. I mean, those have been around for a few years, but definitely we're really excited about the, the progress. The million bucks that's coming in. Yeah. Right, with yeah. the uh, skateboard strategy in the 50 parks in the next 10 years, and especially now that stuff's going to happen in the next two years, too. I, you know, so I read that stat. $11 million, 50, you know, mini parks. Um, I, I don't know what a, a mini park's worth. It seems, you know, they must be pretty cost effective. It could be anything, I think, from a small park, like one of those mm -hmm. half basketball court ones being around $100,000 to a larger one being around a million dollars. So mm -hmm. it does vary. And it's not going to be 50 mini parks. It's going to be a few mini parks, a few larger ones that I guess yes. we're calling destination type parks and yeah. some along the bike path. Or Let's see, 30 little ones, yeah. um, 15 uh, about the size of a uh, hockey rink. Oops, tennis court. Kay. Two about the size of a hockey rink, and three of the larger size that are about the size of a junior league um, baseball field. So in ten years, that's yeah. our hope. The first two years that we're doing, we're we're concentrating on the smaller ones, the skate parks and the neighborhoods. So we want to get product out there. We want to yeah. get kids skating, <gasps> not just kids, but <laughs> everyone, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone who wants to <laughs> skate um, next year. So this is the this is our dream of having the construction happen in the spring of next year and then people enjoying themselves. So is this a one-off or has this been done in other cities prior? Having a strategy like yeah, this? Yeah, like this, yeah. Because it seems like well, my, the city's really taking some initiative. Well, to me it seems like Edmonton and other cities, and I know Vancouver has quite a few skateboard parks. So I say BC, I should say Vancouver, yeah. but uh, yeah. I think they probably work on somewhat of a strategy that they get it out. I think most times any city does something that's with a strategy, they don't just kind of just do it. Yeah. So. I would assume that most uh, municipalities follow strategies. So, so how tight is the partnership then, that you've you know kind of engineered between Case and the city? Uh, like I said, Case has been together for quite a while. We've been a nonprofit maybe uh, I'm a little maybe off in the year, maybe five, six, seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've worked with the city probably since then, and uh, it's taken a while to get to this point where we're actually got something. But once we worked on the amenity strategy and they started to see statistics out there, I think it was about a little over eight percent of the population skateboards and. I think, as she mentioned, that the parks aren't just used by skateboarders. So you could say there's, you know, 40,000 skateboarders, but there's also going to be people on BMXs yeah. and rollerblades and all that. And that's not something as skateboarders we can control. The city's going to open it for everyone. So you got to realize there's got to be quite a bit of spaces to accommodate that. Also, mm, true enough. I think those uh, non non-structured sports are really picking up where pe people can oh, just yeah, go to school. Oh yeah, it's clear. Right? It's incredible. It's 
what it is now. So as we move into getting our consultants, which we hope to have by the end of June, that will be again engaging case in because they are the, the voice of skateboarders in Calgary. Mm -hmm. So we'll be working closely with them to Makes a lot of sense. ensure that we design the, the parks that meet the needs of the people because yeah. mm -hmm. that's a really that's important right. That's part. the way to do it. Uh, the city has a number of programs now uh, as far as uh, lessons and teaching youngsters and the do's and don'ts of skateboarding. How have those programs helped grow the sport locally? And uh, are they well, are they worthwhile in your opinion? I mean, of course, I would hope so. Uh, I'm a little bit older than so. I didn't probably take those uh, those lessons and courses. But they do have them at the mobile parks. Mm -hmm. And I believe at one point, uh, they don't do them anymore, but they used to have them at Millennium Park as well, which would be Shaw Millennium Park. And I think it's great. I mean, I think you know if there's some young kids that need that guidance, they can go ahead and take the lessons. Mm -hmm. uh, myself and a lot of the kids maybe grow up where there isn't lessons. And uh, most kids at skate park will kind of take a little mentorship over the younger kids, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it's cool, man. It's one, thing, it's one it. thing that's so common amongst uh, Calgarians, that spirit of community. You know, if you can kind of help out, uh, you know, teach those the ways the way it should be. I think it's great. You know, we did a show last week on hip hop. It's really alive in that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's cool, man. Uh, we've got to take a quick break here, folks. Actually, our half hour is almost up. After this quick break, we're going to wrap it up and ask a random question. Stay with us. Brought to you by Earth Rangers. Shh, I'm searching for Oregon spotted frogs, and I can't find a single one. That's because there's barely any left in the wild. I became an Earth Ranger so I could help protect these amazing amphibians. So what are you waiting for? Let's bring back the wild. Go to earthrangers.com, become an Earth Ranger, and start your Oregon spotted frog campaign today. Okay guys, we're gonna wrap it up with our random question. Now the way this works, you take my word for it, I've got no idea what's on these sheets of paper. There's a couple questions here. Stephanie, I'll let you do the honors. Just pass it back to me. I'll read it and we can all... This question, I pick a question? Yeah, yeah, you pass it. Well, do you want that one? You know, you know, I'm not saying you have to take that one. Okay, clear. You're committed to it. No, I can tell. All right, the question is, what's Calgary's best kept secret? It's so secret, it just stumped us off. I'll let the city of Calgary go first, so I think of this one. <laughs> I'll tell you what I believe the best kept secret is, is Inglewood Bird Sanctuary. It's a little gem of uh, nature within the urban setting and it's amazing to me how many people don't know about the Inglewood Bird Sanctuary. Yeah, yeah, cool. What do you think, Brian? I couldn't tell you. Um, I think it, everybody has their own little secret. Uh, for me, all the little coffee shops on 17th have just nice little holes in the wall. Just dip in there, relax, kind of get get your mind off things. Fair enough, fair enough. Josh, uh, I guess think? not, I guess my brain's still thinking skateboarding, so I'm not gonna say there's a lot of secret skate spots out there, I'm sure there is, but uh, I mean, there's the uh, skateboard parks and there's the mobile parks, yeah. which are pretty well known, but yeah. I think it's a, I wouldn't say it's a secret, but it's a good thing to get out there that people can go use it any time, right? Yeah, so, fair enough. I mean, the secret would be you could just walk out your door and you can skateboard any day you want, right? For so. me, it's, uh, it's my mom's prime rib roast, <laughs> <laughs> flat out. Calgary's greatest secret. <laughs> Folks, uh, we want to thank you very much for joining us. Hopefully we shed some light on what we think is a very interesting issue. As always, you can keep the conversation going on Facebook as well as Twitter. And if you have a topic you'd like us to discuss, by all means, drop us a line. Thanks again. Take care. Good job, guys. Good.